Hi, I'm Sarah from Your Coming. A pleasure to have you here with us in London for the film festival. Maybe you begin with a brief introduction to this amazing film, Unmoored. What can people expect when they watch it? Ooh. Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn Ingerson. I'm the director. So what to expect? Suspenseful drama thriller with our leading lady, Maria Tilstedt here, playing Maria. Um, it's, I think it's a journey where we follow a woman's mind and it brings us into a very thrilling aspects at times and pushes our boundary, it like pushes the question of where guilt lies. Mm. That's kind of what I think people will discuss a little bit about afterwards. And I understand it's based on a book. Um, tell us a bit about the genesis of the project. You know, when did you first come across the book? What made you think it was going to work so well on screen? And what might be some of the kind of the challenges and opportunities of adapting, you know, a novel for, for the cinema? That's a good question. So, yeah, Unmoored is based on Hawke and Ness's Living and Dead in Winsford. And our scriptwriter slash producer, Michelle Marshall, she... She, it's a pretty funny story. She was at the airport going to one of those convenience stores and picked up a book for the travels. And there she found this book and read it and fell in love and was like, this is the one we have to make into a film. And it's, yeah, Hawke and Lesser is a very, very famous Swedish author. Like, but it is, I, I would say he's fairly known overseas, but in Sweden it's quite a big deal. Uh, but so this was a very different kind of book for him to write comparing to his other books. It's a bit more, it's not so much mind crime or thriller-esque as this one. Um, but anyway, so Michelle started making it into a film, a script, quite a while back. So I think it was a quite a big process to make it to do the adaptation. So I came on board when the first script, like she'd come, she's more or less finished when I came on board with the script. So then me and her were tweaking it together to find Maria's mind mm -hmm. and Maria's journey, so to speak. And to bring you into the conversation, I mean, Maria, what a fascinating multi-layered character to play. Um, when you first read that script, you know, what really jumped out to you and what made you want to get on board with it? I think uh, the moral aspect, uh, trying to understand why a person like that ends up in the situation she ends up in, um, why she does what she does and the choices she takes and how she tries to sort of defend morally what she's done and how she copes with it was really interesting. And then of course, it was a very complex character uh, in my age, which I was, I was, I just loved, like she was 50, <laughs> she was at my true age, and she was not this kind of character who bounces against different male characters. She standed on her own, and you follow her journey like the whole movie through. And of course that's both a challenge and a joy for an actor to sort of portray a person in all these different stages. And how did you prepare to play her? Did you return to the book? Um, how did you perhaps kind of, I guess, make sense of her for yourself? You know, rationalise, you've got to think through, you know, the decisions she's made, and maybe if they, they're not the decisions you would make yourself, but, you know, maybe you had to make sense of that before you could dive in to play her. Yeah. The first thing I did was to read the book, after the script, of course. And then actually I phoned the uh, author and talked to him because it was seen through, like this complex female character was seen through this man's eyes and he captured her so well, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, because I also felt like a lot of his own character is in her. So I wanted to speak with him. So we spoke about how he saw the character. And then I spoke a lot with the screenwriter, Michelle Marshall, about how she saw the character being, I mean, since she did the adaptation. And then I prepared actually mostly by, I, I was really interested in reading about people in different 
ages and sexes and how they sort of ended up making horrible crimes or ending up in strange situations and trying to understand like why did they end up there to be able to understand like the human aspect of this person like everyone can be in this situation given the wrong circumstances and then of course I worked with Caroline we worked for almost 10 days every day mm. and went through the script from like each scene working through it and, and sort of trying to um, how do you say pinpoint like where is this character going where she's coming from what are her hinders like this classical questions you need to answer to be able to find a drive for the character throughout the movie and thinking about kind of the look and feel of the film mm. from, from your perspective I mean it does have that that sense of a thriller mm. um, you know and obviously but then we're also really diving in to the character her thoughts um, watching you know your emotions play out pretty much for almost the entirety of the, the movie so mm. what was your approach in that sense and what did you want to achieve um, I had a reference film that I kept on going back to, um, Take Shelter. That was very much where it's also a psychological thriller, but it's very much played throughout the mind mm. rather than the events around. So for me, that was the, t the ticket with us was that it was as long as it was through Miriam's mind as, and we went on the journey with her, we buy a lot of the things, events that happens. But when we start separating the the journey and what's going on in her mind, that's when we as audience realize that, that she's starting to lose it. And for me, that was very, it was a very important pivot to take at some point throughout the film. But I would say, yeah, Take Shelter was definitely inspiration. Gone Girl was also an inspiration. Um, so there was, um, oh, um, Jeez, God, titles. I had it in my mind for a second. The um, the woman under a woman under influence. No, a woman a woman under influence. There we go. That's also a great film to reference. Mm. So I had a few. And being on the shoot, you know, were there moments that stood out in terms of being very challenging or highlights for you on the other side of that? God, it was. I would say it's it's a, a lot of challenges but in a positive way but it's but it's it's tricky when you're shooting three countries in one and we were filming in Poland and the UK and mostly exterior in the UK and so we have to find locations in Poland that could work mainly for Sweden and then some UK and then Poland that was quite of a journey and for me it was very important to make it distinct and also to show that we were, she was driving, yeah, and creating some sort of feeling of a road trip. Mm -hmm. That was also a, a a tricky path to take. But I, I would say there's, and then we were so many nationalities, but we had an incredible team. We're a mix of Polish, Swedish, Singapore, British, British American. American. So we're like a mix of nationalities. We are so, yeah, we're a big bunch. And I think it was amazing for that alone. But it also shows that you have to learn how you work together. Mm. Like, because we we work differently, all of us. And we have different expectations. But I, yeah, it was, yeah, very beautiful to have that many nationalities together. More, there was yeah, there so many stories of storms that came and we had to stop the bunker shoot. Like there's so many individual stories of horses <coughs> running loose and yeah. And and for you from the other side, was there a scene that you found most difficult or, or one that you enjoyed most? I actually have one scene that comes to my mind and it was when we went to England. We had a car, a Swedish car, with a steering wheel on the Swedish side, mm -hmm. which is opposite of yours. But I was going to drive on your side, on the left side. And that was a challenge because I was actually quite scared because it was really narrow roads. And I also had like uh, the uh, 
the photographer behind me giving me instructions. Then in my ear, I had, I think, you yeah. giving me other instructions. And then I had a walkie talkie <laughs> with the, uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, yeah well, the, the, the function, first, the first, first AD. AD. And he gave me the third instruction at the same time, and they didn't know about each other. And I was like, this is crazy. This is crazy. And finally, I just got so mad. I was like, everyone needs to shut up. Because I, I like three people saying different things and like mm -hmm. pushing me and still driving with the wrong side, wrong steer. And uh, but it was a fun memory. But I, I'm, I'm happy nothing happened. <laughs> And I, I, I do hope they had good insurance. Yeah. Because... Yeah. And thinking about kind of the themes that pop out of it, and as we say, it's such a, a complicated character. Maybe we don't see female characters of this age leading a film yeah. and really not falling neatly into sort of kind of a victim mm -hmm. or a villain. You know, we're very much operating in a very grey area here, particularly when it comes to issues, you know, around kind of um, the consent issue and you know how she's judging other women but you know how is she reconciling that with her own identity so on and so forth so what do you think maybe some of the themes are I think um, I mean firstly it was such a joy for me to portray this character mm -hmm. that is so complex mm -hmm. and is in my age literally we were the same age and before I'd be quite used to not only me, of course, but it's it's very common that your character as a female character bounces against a male one. Mm -hmm. But here she stands alone mm -hmm. and you really follow her journey and her complexity. And I find, like I said before, I think I, I, I think the most interesting with her is trying to understand why she makes the choices she does morally, how she defends her choices, and how she might also sort of understanding that there are consequences of what she did, but she doesn't know how to get out of them. Mm -hmm. And then she ends up in like more and more mess, as you usually do when, when sort of, I can imagine when you've done something horrible, mm -hmm but you, you st still see yourself as a good person, so you try to sort of find ways of excusing your behaviour. I found that very interesting. Mm. Anthea, what did you say? I think you covered it very well. Um, I found it, this character extremely fascinating when I read the script the first time, due to the fact that it's like, we're not, as females, we're not straight, flat, like we are not one way. We're very complex creatures as equally to yeah. men are like complex. And and I think one of the films, other films that I had, I kept on bringing up to you, it was another film, Queen of Hearts, uh, a Danish film that also talks about a woman and in it like guiltiness. And for me, it was very important to to find that character with Maria that is that is allowed to be guilty, but we do love her at the same time. And I think that is a very interesting path to, that was my, it was, it's interesting because if I move a little bit that way, you dislike her. If you a little bit move that way, you love her. So it's like constantly, I remember, I remember the men on set actually said to me, don't you think she's going a bit crazy now? <laughs> And I, when we were shooting, when you were running, yeah. and I was like, but that's the entire point. It's like, allow her to go crazy. Allow her to, why do we have to stick in a box? And because therefore she's even more complex. And we've been talking about this as well, right? Where a lot of men that watches the film thinks he is innocent and it's not that bad. And I've had one person say to me, oh, when I saw that interview with the girl in the film, why didn't you just make it the actual rape scene? Because how do we know that he's actually guilty? Mm -hmm. And it's it's almost like, do I do we as do we have to state, like do we have to show, isn't a word of someone mm -hmm. saying I've been raped enough? Do we have to physically show something happening to believe it? Mm. Um 
and for me that was it's so I find it interesting how you view the film because most females watch it and go god I can't stand him her partner completely understand her and the men go oh but he wasn't that bad mm. but the one thing that I'm very happy with even if I don't think you have to feel this way because I love the discussion uh, but I do feel most people feel Maria she, I don't want her to get caught and that for me is interesting because they all feel for her mm. in the end so yeah and yeah in terms of that I guess is that the kind of power of cinema and also mm. the importance of having different storytellers? The fact that you're able to kind of, in your film, kind of uncover all the, the complexity in these issues in mm. a way that, you know, when it's in the news, when it's in the media, it feels like all oh, the nuance is gone. I mean, I've seen all the stuff going on, with Russell Brand mm. accusations, and people are recalibrating very much attitudes, even how they've changed since, say, the 2000s, never mind before then. Mm. Um, so it's something that's very topical right now. And there's, there's something about cinema, because you're looking at it so innately, you know, so intensely from a character's point of view, that mm. put, helps you see it from another person's perspective. Yeah. So, so do you think true. that's something very important about it? Yeah, I think that's very interesting. And I, I, I don't know, I can't remember if I said it, maybe, excuse me if I say the same thing twice. <laughs> But in my preparation, I, I read a lot about um, people who committed crimes, different kind mm. of crimes, and trying to understand why they did it. Mm. I think it's so interesting because in the end, we're just human beings and, and you can end up in situations you could not think of uh, given the wrong circumstances. And that's really interesting, I think, like the, mm. the moral aspect of why does a person act the way it does and, mm. and, and, and how do you get out of uh, something once you've started? The, how you say it in, in Swedish, we have this like uh, um, oh, um, yeah, crime like a small snowball. Yeah. It, it just, once it starts rolling, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then it's just an explosion, a catastrophe. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's true just trying to understand the human being behind it. Mm. It's always about, about that. I'm not saying that like people who have committed horrible crimes, not to excuse them, but, mm. but there are also human beings and some of them are sick and some are not. And they ha also have families and... And also the intent for Maria is not like, I'm going to close this door on purpose and leave. Like it's mm. not, it's, it's a... Um, it's a moment of frustration and not knowing that it's going to lock and leave him. Like, so I think it's very, um, it is discussing the, the topic of where does the line, where's the line drawn for a crime to be committed? Yeah. Where is it, is, and also the fact that it's like, when they feel for you, when you committed this crime, is that, a good or a bad thing, you know? What does that say about them morally? Mm -hmm. If they are, it just shows that we're. It's not straight and narrow. It's not just one way. It's a bit more complex. We all have backstories for everything that we do. There's all always a story behind, and this is. But that's the thrill. That that's a can, thrill. Yeah, you can relate to that. Yeah. Oh God, could I end up in this situation? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. And Maria, I think is. What I also love about your journey is that, as the film tells, that your mask comes off, mm. that you become in in this horrible act, or you also at the same time finding yourself mm. within that. Yeah. Yep. And finally, you know, what does it mean to you to have the film playing here at London Film Festival? And I guess. Um, you know, we are seeing like the landscape really open up in terms mm. of female filmmakers and female led films. And it feels like one of these festivals is a great platform for, for having that diversity. I think it's brilliant to be at BFI London Film Festival. First, for, because it's a British film. So it's beautiful to have our like domestic premiere or international world premiere in our home country. So that makes me super excited. Also, I used to go to print, where we're screening tonight, Prince Charles Cinema. I used to go there as a poor student 
like paying my little what was it, cheap Tuesdays or Thursday, I can't remember. And so now it's kind of full circle moment for me to come back and screen mm. our own film at that cinema and in London. So yeah, I'm thrilled. Mm. I'm free. And uh, well, I just agree. I'm super happy to be here. I think it's a very nice festival. It feels a very uh, a festival towards the audience. Mm -hmm. And like, it's been so far very nice to meet people. It feels very friendly and open. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to to see what happens tonight. How we're gonna how we're gonna be um, how do you say more tolna perceived or oh, received. received received yeah mm -hmm. or not we the movie how it's gonna yeah. be received. It's gonna yeah. be very very. Uh, exciting. And for a film like this, certainly seeing people's reactions yeah. and like you say, what are the things that yeah. people are talking about as they yeah. kind of leave the cinema. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with me. Thank and you. really enjoy presenting the film here. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you.